Hey everybody, Rob here. It's time for a couple of stories from the Pro Revenge Archives. First one, screw me over the day I'm supposed to start a job. Enjoy your worst sales year in decades. Let's jump right in. Did you know 52% of you watching this video right now aren't actually subscribed to the channel? Hit that subscribe button for more daily Reddit stories. Background. A few years ago, I worked in the wine industry and I traveled to Australia to try and broaden my experience of the industry as well as of life and to try out living abroad for a while. I also knew the pay there was vastly higher than what was my home at the time in the UK. I had quite a bit of experience, a decent CV resume, great qualifications in the industry and academically and I was young and eager. At the time, I had a one-year work visa but this could have been extended to two or longer, depending on the employer. I applied for loads of jobs. Many were listed on the various employment websites, industry-specific ones, Gumtree. If I liked the sound of it, I applied for it. I also wrote to various wineries in the area that I really liked with my CV and various details. I got a lot of replies, but one of my favorites got back to me. They put me in touch with their hiring manager. I was stoked to have an interview with one of my favorite wineries in the region for a sales rep job. I drove to the winery, met with the hiring manager, and had the interview of my life. I nailed it. To this day, I've never had a better interview. I met the winery manager, got along great. At the end of the interview, the hiring manager told me I was a shoe in and that they'd be in touch shortly to let me know if I got the job followed by a very reassuring wink and nod. The very next day, I got a phone call saying that they'd be delighted to have me as their regional sales rep, and we discussed a start date. The winery was several hours out of the city, so I had to move quite a distance, rent an apartment, buy a car, and so on. This cost me the vast majority of the savings I'd accumulated back home before the move. A few days before the starting date, I give them a call to let them know I moved in and that I am looking forward to starting, and to ask if they wouldn't mind if I came along a few days before just to get a better lay of the land, etc. They said the owners weren't around, so don't bother coming in, but call again tomorrow. I did, and again, the owners weren't around again. I was due to start on the Monday, so I figured, oh well, I guess I'll meet them then. I showed up bright and early, 20 minutes early on the first day, ready to meet the crew and get stuck in. I walked around until I found someone, as the cellar door and main areas weren't open yet. They told me to hang around until someone showed up. Eventually, the general winery manager appears, and when I say I'm supposed to be meeting with him, the hiring manager, and the owners today, his eyes widen. He goes a little white, and then after some uh-ing, lets me know that they aren't ready today and need a few more days to sort things out, but to call back in the afternoon to find out when I'm really supposed to start. I call back and it goes to voicemail. I leave a voicemail saying, hey, it's no worries. Let me know which day this week you'd like me to start. I call the hiring manager I had spoken to before. That goes to voicemail. I do the same. Two more days pass and I'm starting to get irritated. I want to start work. I call the hiring manager again, who picks up. I'm as civil as I can be, but I do ask why I haven't been called back. She lets me know that the owners have changed their minds and don't want to hire me anymore. She admitted that this was pretty shitty, and she'd been trying to convince them to take me, but they had issues with the fact that I was a temporary worker and wouldn't be there for more than two years. I let her know that there were options for extending my ability to stay in the country, etc. She said she knew, but they were adamant. I was pretty pissed at this point, so I decided to call them directly. Their number was easy to find, so I called them and left a voicemail asking them to call me back, and another voicemail a day later, all the time remaining as polite as I could. Eventually, I called them from Skype with no number, and they actually picked up. I asked why they no longer wished to hire me and tried to explain that they could apply for an extension and sponsorship if they liked having me. Then came the line, we just don't want a pommy working for us, plain and simple mate, you dicks. 
This had nothing to do with the sponsorship thing. You just don't like Brits. I'm not even a palm. This is typically slang reserved for English. I am Scottish. I terminated my lease, cancel my internet, and drive back up the coast about 2,000 Australian dollars in the hole, not including the price of the car, fuel, food, time wasted, etc. Revenge. Pissed off, but at this point desperate for money, I stay at a hostel and begin job hunting again. This time, there's a pretty great job as a regional manager and buyer for a decently sized chain of liquor stores. This is a little beyond my previous experience, but f*** it, I go for it. I get the job, and suddenly I'm responsible for seven stores and the purchases they make. Seven big stores that buy a lot of wine. When store managers make their weekly orders, it was done through an online system where the various products and quantities were put in. There was a short window between the order being submitted and the order actually going through to be fulfilled. I simply cancelled each and every store's orders of the wines from that winery. I did that every single week until I left. Each store was ordering between 15 and 30 cases of this producer's wines per week, an average of about $6,000 per store in sales, closer to $4,000 per order per store. When the store managers saw that their stocks were dwindling or gone and asked me about it, I simply said that they'd change their pricing and we can't afford to sell it right now. Every time their sales rep, who did not know me, called to ask what the problem was, I just told him that their product just wasn't moving and we don't need any stock right now. He didn't think to even compare previous year's sales records. He'd have seen that their wine was great it had always sold well. I wasn't there long. I hated that job, the hours, and the stress of taking care of seven freaking stores and their problems. But the revenge was sweet. After four months, I packed it in, and I reckon their shitty attitude cost them over $400,000 in sales. I could have made that for them if they'd hired me. OP, how did you not rub that in their faces? Oh my gosh, you have some serious discipline. On to our next story. Steal my money and then become hostile when I ask for a refund? Have fun with that felony on your record. Let's jump right in. This happened a few years ago right after I graduated college. I would make an 8 hour drive home a few times a year to see family, usually over the holidays. During these trips, there was only wilderness, fields, mountains, and tiny-ass towns along the way. During one of these trips, I stopped at a gas station to get some food, and I apparently lost my debit card, or it was stolen. It was a card I never used and looked identical to my main one, so I didn't notice it missing until later when I got a call from my bank and I see my account overdrafted. Being fresh out of college making $12 an hour, the $400 was a huge deal. I worked at a credit card processor at the time, so I had a very unusual familiarity with how credit card transactions worked. This was a debit card but ran as credit. I could have done a chargeback, of course, but I knew that merchants were fined $15 for each chargeback on top of the return and got a ding on their record with Visa, MasterCard, Amex. If they had too many chargebacks, they would have their processing revoked and incur heavy fines. Merchants are usually mom and pop shops and are usually innocent in the matter, so I decided to give them a call. Also, the charges all came from the same gas station that I lost it at, so I suspected it was an employee who found or stole my card and was stupid enough to use it at work. I wanted to let the manager and owners know so they could keep an eye out for unscrupulous employees. Employee theft is unfortunately common and is not brought to light until a customer brings it up. I thought I would just give them a call and ask for the refund. Easy. I call and a woman answers. I ask to speak with a manager and she says she is the manager. I explain that I had lost my card at the location and someone had later used my card there. I said I didn't want to accuse anyone, but I think one of her employees had the card and she may want to investigate. I also said, I'd like a return for all the purchases to save them the hassle of a chargeback. When I usually work with managers in this situation, they're very willing to help and take employee theft very seriously. Instead, I'm met with hostility and insults. 
She told me, I probably deserved it for losing my card in the first place and not noticing, and I deserved this lesson. She interrupted me and told me to basically go f myself, and none of her employees would steal. Getting a bad feeling, I ask for the number of the owner. She says there is no owner. What? By now, I'm shaking in anger, so I tell her I'm calling the police and hang up. She tries to call back and I don't answer. By now, I'm angry crying. I have a feeling I know who did it, but now I need to prove it. I had no intention of calling the cops because what cops care about some petty credit card theft? It's incredibly hard to prove and most cops have murder and shit to worry about. Lucky for me, this is in the middle of nowhere, population 100 or something. First, I call my bank and ask if they have the record of the exact times the card was used. They gave me the times down to the minute. I then call the police and get a very friendly woman. It seems she's not busy and actually listens to my story, including the hostile manager. I ask if she's able to go look at the surveillance tapes or something. She says the store is five minutes away and she will stop by. I guess she felt sorry for me or was bored, but I'll take it. She says she'll give me a call if she finds anything. I eagerly await her call, but was not expecting much. A couple days go by and I get a call from the nice officer lady. She says that she went by the store and reviewed the footage. At the exact times I told her, the cameras caught the hostile manager making the purchases, signing receipts for the exact same amounts with a card that looked exactly like mine. Even better, they were going to charge her with felony identity theft since making purchases on someone's card without permission is identity theft on top of monetary theft, at least in my state. They asked if I wanted any restitution, but my bank had refunded me the stolen money, so I declined. I was absolutely not expecting a cop to go out of their way to help me, and I was definitely not expecting it to result in an arrest. I felt a sense of pride for actually sticking up for myself and not just taking the money from my bank and letting the thief go. I'm a pretty small and non-confrontational person, but that day I felt like a badass. If she'd been nice and worked with me or even just apologized and done the returns, I would not have called the cops. Because she was so rude and unhelpful, she got a felony instead. I think OP learned that in a lot of small towns, people will go out of their way to help you. I mean, come on, there's not much else for them to do. I want to thank both OPs for posting their stories to the Pro Revenge subreddit. You can visit them at the links in the description below. Please go there and give them an upvote. Once again, this is Rob from Karma Comment Chameleon saying thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that subscribe button, drop a like, and share it with your friends, and we'll see you in the next one.